Alrighty, hello again everybody. Today we're going to be talking about UI customization. And it's actually pretty important in this game that you take a second, hopefully when you're a new player, you know, go over all the little different settings and everything that this game has to offer. They've been making changes since it's been released, you know, to try and make the UI more manageable. They can't fix a lot of the major issues with it. A lot of people will complain about the, the latency with it and you know, things like that. There's some of these things we're just going to have to wait for FF14 version 2.0 to get fixed. They're doing the redoing the entire UI. Um, you know, there's going to be player add-ons, you know, so you'll be able to have much heavier customization. But until then, we are looking at dealing with the UI as it is now. And it's not really that bad. There are some complaints I have in particular. I don't like the action bar, for instance. I'm sure the action bar is very great if you're a person who likes to use a game controller um, but for a PC player the action bar is kind of a pain in the butt um, it's not activated all the time you have to press a button to activate it and then you have to scroll up and down inside the bars to use them and you can't bind them to other keys um, it can lead to it can lead to some, some troubles for me playing anyway I mean if you have a remote control I mean you know a controller you really it's probably exactly what you want um, but for me, I like to use the keyboard only. I don't even like to use the mouse. I just want to use the keyboard. So anyway, we're going to go through a lot of the, you know, every single one of these options here and make sure you know exactly what you can and can't change. First and foremost, I want to go to the keyboard settings first. For me, I change these pretty heavily. There's two types that you can start with, type A and type B. Um, I just altered type A. I did not like either default by default the way they had them set up um, you know one one method is trying to is mostly trying to make you use the keyboard and mouse you know you move the camera with the mouse by holding down the right mouse button and stuff like that I don't like that unless I'm you know and that's where the movement with WASD comes in I don't like that either I want to just use the keyboard so I want my right hand to be for controlling the camera moving my character zooming in zooming out that sort of thing and I want my left hand to be for targeting and using abilities. Um, that's just the way I play. I come from playing FF11 for a very long time. And so you're, you're probably never going to see me want to play an MMO any other way. Um, now, if the MMO was designed differently, yeah, I might use the mouse. For instance, in WoW, uh, I played that for a few months. And I used, yeah, I used the mouse pretty heavily. So WASD to move is perfectly fine in WoW because I'm using my right hand to do a lot of other things. Um, with the mouse. Um, one of the things you'll see I changed here is instead of WASD for movement, it's actually the anchors. These anchor buttons are what's going to allow you to navigate inside menus. Up and down on the action bar to change action bars, um, up and down inside that main menu to select things, uh, that sort of thing. Um, what it will not change is like inside menus that aren't in the game. Like when you're doing character select, you might, you know, I'm used to hitting S for down. And in the character select, S is still movement. So it doesn't really change everything, and that's kind of another pet peeve I have, but it's just something to look out for. Uh, most people will probably just pop in the game. It'll be set to type A, and they'll try and learn it from there. But FF14 has notoriously poor targeting scheme. Um, I mean, if you're coming from WoW, you're coming from FF11, you're going to be blown away at how annoying it is to try and target. You have got to come up with a way to manipulate the targeting system in this game so that it's not going to drive you crazy. I doubt very many people are going to come into this game and think, wow, that's it's really easy to target the mob I want to target and fight the mob I want to fight. No, you're probably going to struggle with that quite a bit. So, you know, you get out there, of course, if you're brand spanking new and try and, you know, fight some things to see how it goes. But... Um, you are going to want to probably learn how to target things. For me, I want to just hit tab to change my target. And that's pretty unfortunate for me, as um, tab targeting in this game is really, really bad. It has a left to right scheme. There's no target priority. Um, it's not like it prioritizes the targets closest to you or tar prioritizes the targets with the most hate or the ones that are attacking you. It doesn't do that. It just goes from left to right. It doesn't even compensate for near or far. If the you know, so it starts on the left, and if the leftmost mob is really, really far away and not even remotely related to what you want to target, you're still going to target it. 
Uh, the game doesn't have a priority based targeting system. It does have a couple different modes you can use to make it bearable. And it is, it is very fine. I, you know, it works fine for me now, but it took me a little while to get it in a place where I could, I could deal with it. Um, now, and, and the normal type A keyboard setup, it's going to have you move WASD and change targets with your arrow keys. Uh, the arrow keys uh, right next to your numpad. Um, I don't like that because I want to use the arrow keys for moving my camera. Uh, you know, just like FF11, I'm sure any of you coming from FF11 know what I'm talking about. I have my thumb on those keys and I have it spin the camera around and I have my fingers on the numpad to move my character forward and backward. So I don't want to, I don't want to use it for that. Besides the fact that it's sloppier than I want. I mean, four buttons, you know, one dedicated to targeting yourself and then left and right. It's, that's a little silly. It's still not even priority based. The one, the one good thing though is that we do have we do have some F key modifiers that will help target. And I between tab targeting and being able to use these and setting other target filters, it won't be so bad. But you got to learn what all this stuff is. Um, first of all, I didn't change any of these. So target nearest NPC, PC, and enemy are the ones I use the most. F10 through F12. I actually don't use F9. Um, I mean that might be that might be a nice one for someone to learn, but I actually have Fraps record on F9, so I probably don't want to have to retrain myself to do that. But I want you guys to know that tab targeting, if you're just planning on going in here and hoping it's gonna be like FF eleven or maybe like another game where you hit one button to change between targets or something like that, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be real smooth. I mean you're gonna be targeting things and thinking, why the hell is it targeting that? Um, sometimes you'll hit, you'll tr be trying to tab through targets, and because targets are moving around within the window, and it's and it's very strict about going from left to right, you'll you can sometimes bypass right through a mob because it moved out of the way of where it was going to target, and now you have to re, you know, target through every single mob again to get to that mob and hope that mob doesn't move again before you can target it. So, yeah, for for a new player, that's probably one of the most frustrating things is that you know the UI is working against you and not for you as a new player. I mean you really have to figure out where where you want to put these these keys and how you want to manipulate it. Are you someone who uses the keyboard and mouse? Are you somebody who uses a controller? Um you know that sort of thing. If you are someone who uses a controller, none of this here actually matters to you. You can just slap on chat specific keyboard and be done with this particular portion because you're going to be binding all your keys to your keyboard anyway. You're not going to want to have to be switching from your controller to your keyboard all the time. The only thing, time you're going to want to use your keyboard is when you're talking. And that's what that option's for. You just slap that on, and all these binds will disappear. They'll be they'll all be grayed out, and you won't have to worry about them. You just use your keyboard for typing. Um, but in my case, my keyboard is my entire playing experience. Obviously, for this video, I'm using the mouse a little bit. But uh, if I wasn't making this video, I pretty much never even touch my mouse while the game's up. And that's just the way I like to play. So after having gone over that, um, and unfortunately, there is one more thing I want to say about this. It is a little annoying to bind keys in this game. Um, you know, usually you can select... A, a bind like this and then just press a button to change it. I hit S and it says unable to map that key is already being used. Get used to seeing that because it will not let you bind a key that is already in use. So that is really annoying. Normally in a game or something like this it would just it would maybe warn you but overwrite an existing bind. You know it would say okay you can't use the same bind for two different functions so we're just gonna overwrite it. I really prefer that because in this way, if you want to remap keys that are already used, you have to go find where that key is currently mapped, in this case S, and then you have to change it to something else. But you may not necessarily even want to deal with that, so what, you end, what I end up having to do is, you'll see this in other, <laughs> in other tabs here, what I ended up doing is having to make most things like alt and control of the same things just to, just to make them, you know, I can bind E now, so I have to make this alt E. And, you know, I just went through and because a lot of these functions I'm not even going to use. I'm really concerned about a couple of the primary ones and then past that, it's like not a big deal. So it's really, it just really annoys me. You can't blank it out. You know, you can't just erase the bind and go in there and do it. So it can be really annoying. You're going to have to go every single time you want to bind something, you're going to have to hope it's not already being used or go find it somewhere in here and unbind it. Just, uh, just to warn you. 
it will take you a little time. And that's one of the reasons you're not going to see me manipulating all these little binds for you. I don't want to have to redo it. On that note, when you do finish setting up your keyboard or any of these settings and you don't want them to revert, I recommend logging all the way out. You know, just let it save into your config file. Um, that way, you know, if it crashes or something like that, you, you don't run the risk of losing all the time you put into messing with your keyboard settings. Uh, next, I want to go over target set settings because I've already been talking about that quite a bit. So uh, let's get talking about these. Now, there's three targeting modes, and this is going to be really, really important. This is where the tab targeting is either going to be kind of a pain in the ass or it's not going to be a pain in the ass. A lot of people don't even know what these do. They were gone over very briefly in like patch notes, and uh, it's just not like there's any tutorials or anything for this stuff. So, um, hope that guy doesn't mind being in a video. All right, so we got target type A. This is pretty much it's set to all by default, and what all means is that you can target anything. You're going to be able to target anything on your screen. I just target my. And I love how it targets yourself. I mean, it doesn't even care. I mean. Why would I use tab to target myself? I don't know. But, you know, see how it just goes left to right? Doesn't matter the distance knobs are, or even if it's relevant, it's going to target that. It's going to target any, anything. That's what the all modifier is. And this is what you're going to start the game with. Uh, and, it's, and it can be a little annoying. Um, just off the top of my head, what if you're a botanist? Why in the world would you want to be able to target all of these chumps? You're not going to want to target all these chumps. You're just going to want to target that that one little harvest point right there um, and that's what I'm talking about you can change the target filter with this mode but it's it's more difficult because it in this particular mode mode a they it's supposed to be if you do change the target filter it gets locked into that target filter so that it doesn't change on you and the way you do that is hitting uh, auto run with one of the uh, one of the one of the other keys, and they're all set up. And I'm gonna post a link to Lodestone if you want to see those. Because personally, I didn't go through the trouble of memorizing how to change them. They're actually pretty worthless. Um, if you want to change between targeting modes, I recommend target mode B, which is what I'm gonna talk about right now. We're gonna go in here and such to B. B, I rather like. I pretty much leave it on B all the time. Um, it's very easy to change between modes. On the normal default setup, you will change between modes by hitting the up and down arrow keys. However, on my game, as I said earlier, I actually have those bound to the camera. I set the change target mode to R on my keyboard, and that changes between friendly and enemy. It will also change between party if you're in a party. If you're not in a party, it will not change to that ever. It will never go to all, however. That's the advantage that, part, that type A has over type B. If you want to switch between all friendly, enemy, and party, you need to use type A and learn which buttons switch between them. But if you don't need the all filter, which I certainly don't need that filter, um, <laughs> you just use target mode B. As you can see, if I have it set on if I have it set on enemy, I don't target this Porsche this Porsche mock over here just running through my video. It just targets enemies. And this is where I'm talking about with my botanist. I love it for my botanist. I just set it to friendly. I don't have to sift through a hundred mobs running around in the spot I'm at. It just targets, you know, me or another player or, you know, one of the harvesting spots. Now keep in mind these filters, while they do restrict you from, say, targeting another player if you're in enemy mode like this, if you hit an ability, it will allow you to still target things that ability uses. So if you're concerned that, you know, what if I have it set to enemy, but I'm a healer? Well, you're not really gonna have to worry about that. On a, As a healer, if I hit cure, it's only gonna allow me to tar target things I can cure. As you can see, it won't let me tab target to anyone else, just me. So I'm the only target that's, that's available for being cured. So, and that's the same thing down here if you're a healer and you want to set it to friendly, but let's say you want to paralyze the mob, you know, what if I want to paralyze a group of enemies, but I don't really do much else, I just want to paralyze them. You can still set it to friendly, and then when you hit paralyze or sleep or whatever, it'll allow you to target only the things that you can actually sleep or paralyze or whatever. And then any other time, when you're just targeting for cures, you'll only be able to target party members. 
Um, that's really been helpful to me um, while playing. The action bar is still a bit of a problem because, as you see, I have to hit a button to activate the action bar. And then I have to use the anchor keys to scroll up and down inside the action bar to find something I want to, you know, I want to actually cast or whatever. I'd rather the thing was just constantly activated and there was no switching around inside these things. That drives me nuts. But it is what it is. And we've got to work with it until we have add-ons or until they change it. I do believe they said something about um, adding in that feature where all three action bars are on at the same time in 1.20 or 1.21. Uh, version update which are coming soon if that's the case I will update it in the description of this video but until then as I said these are very important now we're gonna go into type C here uh, the targeting types this is the original way the game was this is the original targeting when the game came out it's strictly set to all and there's no way to change between the modes ever you can't change between the modes always on all you're not gonna accidentally change between them if you don't want to deal with any of that, you just have to put it on C. But to be honest, for most players, A and C are going to be identical. Because changing the, the target filter in mode A is not easy. You have to hit a very rare combination of keys in order to change the target mode in the first place. Target filter, sorry. Um, so, you know, target A, type A and type C are going to be identical to most people. They're not going to notice a difference. Um, but like I said... Um, it's really between A and C, as far as I'm concerned, as to which mode you really want to be in. I mean, A and B, I'm sorry. And in target and type B is the one I prefer, because I absolutely have no use for the all function, considering it just it sifts through the target so poorly. Um, I would much prefer a targeting system where targets are prioritized. I mean, if I'm on Botanist, do we really need me to be able to target... Um, you know, a mob. I mean, what am I going to do to it? Am I going? Am I actually going to use the throw ro throw rock at the mob? All that's really going to do is get me killed. On well, botanist, all I want to target is this. I mean, that doesn't mean that I still even it, you know maybe it would target mobs and stuff, but it should at least prioritize targeting the harvest point. I mean, that's just me anyway. I, I don't know. It drives me nuts that it, that it's that that it's that silly. But that's why I'm making this video. To be honest with you. Um, uh, a lot of this information isn't really widespread enough. Um, I don't think they do a very good job of explaining it. And it will make or break the game experience for you if you're constantly struggling inside your user interface to, to make something work. Now we're going to go over the, the target cursor types. They're pretty, pretty um, simple. This is just the circle that you see here. It's all it is is, show, is how it displays on the screen. Um, down here is just floating, so it has a little floating icon over its head. I like to have both, just because I like the way they look, and it really helps me find the location. You know, if you have a lot of the times in EXP parties, you'll be fighting a lot of mobs at the same time. You know, you get a four link, and you end up fighting five mobs at the same time, or mobs aggro you and get on top of you, and you can't see which one's which all the time that easily. Um, so if I have both targeting cursors on, I can kind of pinpoint which one it is on the screen a little bit better. Um, but anyway, that's not a very important uh, a very important setting. Direct targeting. This is whether or not you want uh, a target to still use the modifier if you hit enter. So let's say I have nothing targeted, whatever, and I just want to target something by hitting enter, which will target supposedly the closest thing to you. I find it to be a little, a little iffy. <laughs> I use the F keys. So if I wanted to target a mob, I would hit F10, for, for example. Um, I recommend that rather than trying to use Enter as a direct targeting uh, thing. But if you do want to use it, this setting here will decide whether or not it uses your target filter to determine the closest mob. So for instance, I have it off. So that means that it, that it, will, it will use my target filter. Like I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to change my target settings back to my type B the way I like it with friendly. If I hit enter, it's going to target the nearest friendly thing. It's not going to target the nearest thing, which happens to be that squirrel. Um, if I don't want it to do that, if I want enter to always target the closest thing to me, regardless of what my target filter is, that's when you turn this on. And when that's turned on, even with friendly activated, it will still target that closest star marmot right there. 
So um, if that's how you want to set it up, be my guest. I don't really like the direct targeting in this game to begin with. I would just use F10 if you want to target the closest mob to you. You know, uh, F11 and F12 for NPCs and PCs if you want to target the next mob to you. If you want to target a party member specifically, uh, I recommend the F key, you know, F, F1 through uh, 8 for, the, for that. Um, you know, it's a lot easier to remember their position in a party. Uh, especially when you're looking at their position with their HP bars while you're healing or whatnot. So, I, you know, I, I just leave that off. Um, just I don't really do much direct targeting anyway. Auto target lock, pretty simple. Um, it's automatically going to lock on to any target that you want to do something to. Uh, this used to be a big deal. A lot of paladins, uh, paladins, a lot of uh, gladiators when using cover. They, it used to make you face them. You had to face the target in order to cover them. So you had to turn off target lock so you could target the guy, and then you'd have to lock onto the guy so you faced him, and then use cover, and then unlock from him, and go back to your other target, lock onto that target so you face that target so you could provoke it. It was a, it was a little dance you had to do. Um, you don't really have to go through all that, that trouble anymore. This is just, do you want it to lock on or not when you target something? That's all it is. Um... Now this, this little function down here, all the way at the bottom, I had high hopes for this. I thought it would be really nice. Target engaged enemies only. Uh, like when you're in a party, this is basically forcing you to assist only. Um, I found, though, that it can be a little buggy. It works most of the time. Um, I don't know if, it's, if, it's, if I'm the only one who's had this experience. I haven't really talked to anybody who even uses this function. Um, but the idea is that if a mob's engaged, you know, say to your party and it's and you're fighting it, you would be able to target it and fight it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to target it. You know, that's kind of nice, especially the idea of it anyway is really nice, especially, you know, you're fighting six mobs, but yet there's a couple other mobs that you're not fighting who are kind of just standing around in, <laughs> inside that group. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to accidentally target that one and then link up a whole bunch of new mobs for everybody to deal with. Um but in my experience, sometimes it won't let me target the mob that's engaged. I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what. But anyway, I pretty much just leave that off. Um, with a lot of these other things, like enemy-only targeting, uh, you know, having it set on targeting type B and having my my keyboard set up the way I want, really don't have that much trouble targeting at that point. I mean, it, it got to. It took me a long time to get to a point where I I was able to get used to it and to understand this targeting system. But after that, I really, you know, really don't have that much trouble um, targeting. So, but that is that is an option there for you if you're really bad at mistargeting and you're really struggling just to get. This will really narrow down the amount of targets you have available to you. I mean, they'll only let you target things that other people are attacking at that point, and so you really have to tab through a lot less mobs. Um. Now, that, that's the primary thing that I wanted to go over. I think that targeting and the action bar are probably some of the biggest issues I have had personally. So I wanted to make sure that I went over that for everybody else. Now I'm just going to pretty much go down the line here, and we're going to talk about these. Now this action bar display, I'm a little disappointed in this particular function. I was hoping that the function would be just leave the action bar up all the time. Don't ever take the action bar away from me. But really all it does is let you see the action bar all the time. You still have to hit a button to activate the action bar, and then you can use you scroll around in the action bar and use it. So that's just whether or not you want it on your screen or not. I don't even care. I just leave that on. Toggle macro bar, macro bar on and off. Um, if you're going to be using macros, um, this is an option that will be important to you. This particular function, if it's on and I hit Alt, it'll actually leave this bar up on the screen. I have to hit Alt again to get it to go away. So that's if you wanted to use macros in the same way that you use your action bar. This would be useful for someone who is using a controller, would not be useful for someone like me who wants to use a keyboard only. Um, I'm perfectly fine having the Alt come up, hit the button, and then it's done, it goes away. So again, you might want that to be on if you are using a controller, off pretty much if, if you're not. A damage display, that's just whether, you know, showing you damage on the screen or not. I like that on because I don't actually use a battle log. Um, I don't really care that much, um, but I do like to kind of see the numbers when they pop up over the enemy, and that's kind of nice. Profanity filter off because it likes to filter a lot of random things that is not profanity. 
If you want to know about these functions, I've already discussed them in a, in a different video about graphics customization. Um, it goes over these in-game options and the ones outside the game. If you're having trouble with that, I recommend watching that video. It's uh, on my channel, and it is the, the feature video at the moment. Name display. This is, this is uh, a pretty important one for me. I like the enemy icons, levels, and enemy bard all beyond. These three things right here are really nice to me. First of all, being able to see the enemy level allows you to know, you know, exactly how hard it is going to be compared to you without having to, you know, con the mob or all that sort of stuff. Mobs your level are going to be, you know, I mean, you're going to be able to beat them e easily enough, but they're not going to go down easy. Mobs higher level than you, of course, are going to become progressively harder until you really can't do them without a party. Mobs lower level than you are going to become progressively easier. Um, it's actually much more like FF11 now in terms of level comparison um, and how difficult mobs are than uh, it was when this game was released. When this, you know, uh, up until 1.19, you could pretty much fight mobs 15 levels higher than you. It was pretty, it was no problem. Uh, the balance was a little skewed. However, anyway, that, you know, so it gives you an idea how much EXP you'll get from mobs and, uh, you know, where you want to go to EXP. The enemy bars, I really like it. It's really just a little red. Oh, well, it's just a little a little orb that shows up uh, under the mob's name. It's green when you have, you know, no, barely any enmity on the mob. It's, uh, you know, then becomes yellow and then red and then flashing red when it's attacking you. Um, so it gives you a way to gauge um, what you can and can't be doing in a fight. So I, I really like having that on enemy icons. This is just whether they're passive or aggressive. As you can see, everything in here has a green icon next to its name means it's passive. If it had a red, jaggedy icon next to its name, that would mean it's aggressive. So I really like those enemy icons, so you don't have to worry about, is this mob aggressive, is it not aggressive, can I run by it, that sort of information. Names on and off, pretty simple stuff, do you want to see character names or not? You can also do this with a, I usually just, when I want to turn them on and off, I just use the, uh, the actual text command, it's faster, just pop in names, um, turn that on and off. Uh, log settings. Uh, a lot of people are probably going to want to do something different here than I have shown on my screen. I only have the one general tab, and that's it. That's all I want to see. I don't really care about much else. Um, what I see a lot of other people do is actually use... And what you have here, and this is a little confusing the way they have it set up, what you have here is two different... You know, you have two tabs you can use per window, and you have two windows you can use. So you can use... If I, if I enable this... It'll pop up another window here. And this will enable the second window. So that's what this is. First window and second window. First tab in each window. Second tab in each window right here. Um, so what I see a lot of people do is have this second tab up here like this. Maybe not, maybe smaller. And what they'll do is they'll only enable a couple things in it. Like party chats and maybe some other one other specific thing. That way, like say they're in the Afrit battle and uh, someone has a macro set up to warn them when Hellfire is coming or something like that. They'll, they'll have that window dedicated to being able to see that. It won't be scrolling on their screen if, you know, if their link shell's blabbing it up. They'll be able to just see their party chat up there. I've seen that quite a bit. That does seem like that would be an efficient thing to do. However, up until now, I really had no function for another window. The way you enable these tabs is to simply click the tab in question. This is the general tab. It's not going to let me make it go away. You have to have at least one, the one log up here. You can rename it to whatever you want. You can show or hide as much information in it as you want. As you can see, pretty much any battle information is hidden. Um, just a few things. The rest of it's all for chatting. Um, and, of course, you can name it whatever you want. If I wanted to name it Talkies. Oops, my, my bad. I can erase this. I can name it. This is the Talkies channel. And it'll just leave that like that. Now, if I want to add a second tab to this, maybe I want to have the battle information, but I don't necessarily want to look at it all the time. This is what that would be for. You, know, you go down here and uh, you know show all these all this battle information, and then when I wanted to see it, I would just click on the battle tab, and I'll go, oh, so that thing hit me for five thousand damage. That's why I died. Great, nice to know. Go back over here. But most of the time, you wouldn't watch it. That's exactly what that would be for. Can you take these and pull these out? No, you can't. Um, these are static. You can have four tabs total and two windows total. And so you can either have one tab and two windows 
or two tabs in one window and a tab in another window, but you can't have four tabs in one window or four windows. You can't do that. You have to have it within these restrictions of one window here, one window here, one or two tabs per window. Personally, I'm just using the one tab. I don't really have that much need for it, but you can adjust the transparency based on your liking. If you don't want to, if you think that the background of this is interfering, you can jack up, you know, the, you know, the transparency or the opacity of it until you can actually see what you're looking at. Um, font size, uh, you can make this small and uh, like this. Uh, I don't know. I've been using medium. I go back and forth. Sometimes I use small because the medium looks too big. I, I don't know what it is. I, I like the smaller text sometimes, but Large is, I don't know, am I 80? I, what, that is huge. I have a 1920 by 1080 resolution. How big does this text have to get? But anyway, you can set it however you like it. Maybe you are 80. I don't know who plays FF14. So there you go. Um, like I said, this, this can be a little confusing the way they have it set up. It makes it look like maybe you could take these tabs and, and like, like if you, if you haven't started off this way, like you could go, oh, I could just drag this down into here and make it this. No, you can't. It's a completely separate window, and it's always going to be a separate window. If you want it to go away, you have to do this. If you want a tab for it, you have to come in here and enable this one. So, uh, oh, <laughs> for whatever reason, the tell sound effect option is in this, I guess because it is the chat log thing. Um, I do like that. I tend to go AFK um, randomly. Uh, and my character will look like this, of course. I'm just standing here doing nothing right out in the middle of God knows where. And someone will send me a, a tell. And if I don't have that sound effect on, I won't know. You know, I'll be watching TV or doing something else. And they'll think I'm ignoring them. And everybody's really sensitive. You know how that goes. So anyway, I like my little tell. My little tell ding. That was something that FF11 desperately needed. You know, sitting there searching for party for eight hours. It took them a really long time before they decided to add that. So, text colors. If for some reason you don't like whatever colors these happen to be by default, I have I don't really care that much as long as they are different colors for different functions. Um, I just get used to whatever those are. It's not really that important to me. But you can click on these and select between some, you know, uh, predefined colors. Uh, they're not going to let you get a color wheel or anything. You can grab some of these predefined colors and change it. Um, but that's, you know, pretty easy stuff. Not a big deal there. Audio is the same thing. There's a lot of really easy stuff in here. Background music is just the music for each area. I generally have this off. Um, I'm pretty much always just listening to music, but sometimes I still want to hear sound effects and stuff. So I'll just have this background stuff off. Um, system sounds, basically all these little sounds you've been hearing up to this point in the menu, clicking around in the menu is the system sounds. I just like to have that a little bit lower than 100. Um, sound effects in this game for me were pretty loud. Um, so like if I'm listening to music and I have it playing at its max volume and I have sound effects all the way up, my sound effects will dominate the music. So that's why I have this down a little bit. Voices, I do not ever put this below 100% unless you just don't want to hear them at all because they're quiet in those cutscenes and little character squeaks that they make and stuff like that. They're all real quiet. So if you want to hear them, leave it at 100%. Uh, the ambient sounds, that's uh, like that owl in the background. Um, of course, I have it all the way down, so you're not going to hear an owl. But, I mean, that owl drives me crazy. I'm a Gridania resident, and there's this one owl, I guess, that follows you around in this forest, and he just hoos at you all day. And he drives me crazy. So I have this almost all the way down. A uh, little ambience in other places isn't so bad, but I can't have that owl hooing at me at, at full volume. And that was actually one of the... It used to drive me crazy. When this game was released, they didn't have all these options. So you couldn't change just the owl sound. You could turn down sound effects and, and background music and stuff, but that owl would still be hooing at you at full volume, driving you crazy. So there's no listening to music loudly, unless you wanted to turn off all game sound altogether. Um, you pretty much had an owl hooing in every in every song you were listening to. Uh, the camera, not a lot of important stuff in here for me personally. I mean, yeah, you either do you want down to actually be down, do you want up to actually be up, or do you want it to be inverted? Um, that's pretty easy. I mean, even if you don't invert it, you could simply go into your keyboard settings and just change the one that says up 
to down and the one that says down to up. I mean, either way, pretty simple stuff there. This is just how far back you can zoom out. Personally, I generally almost all the way zoomed out. Unless I'm trying to like stare at my character's cleavage or her butt or something, I just leave it zoomed out all the time. So, um, but if you don't want the maximum to be that high, you know, it'll actually make the zoom more effective and it won't let you zoom out as far. So, um, I mean, I just, I just leave it. It's defaulted to this and I prefer it back here. That's just, that's just how I play. Um, the vertical camera position again, I mean, that's just how far it is. I mean, for some reason, if you'd rather look closer at your feet than your head, you can adjust that. Now the camera speed is the one thing in here that I think is really important and I'm really glad they added because this is what it was like when you first played FF14. This is how you could spin your camera around. I'm holding the button down. And that is silliness. I don't know why anybody would want their camera to move that slow, but even at fastest, I wish it could kind of go a little faster. I like to spin the camera pretty quick. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. I know I'm weird that I don't generally use WASD keys to move, and someone's oh, someone's over there screaming at me. Listen, I don't play first-person shooters, guy screaming at me who I'm making up in my head. I don't play them. If I did, sure, I'd use WASD keys. I understand that. I understand you're aiming with your mouse, and you want to move with your left hand. That makes sense. I'm with you there. But in my MMO, on my FF14, I'm not moving with the WASD keys. That's silly to me. Uh, what, about, what, would I, what am I going to use my mouse for in this game? Yeah, I have to hold the right button down to move the camera. And the camera doesn't move all that fast to begin with, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. NPC event camera lock is just whether or not it's going to reposition the camera when you're talking to an NPC or not. I have that turned off because it drives me crazy. I don't like it when the game decides to reposition the camera for any reason on its own. I control the camera at all times. Oops. And then, of course, down here we have macros. This isn't really about your user interface. Um... But it is something I could possibly note for you guys. I'm not going to be able to go over the syntax for these. Maybe I'll make a video about that separately later. But if you are going to make macros, this is where you'll find them. So this is control one. As you can see, this is what that would be. And then control two, control three, etc., etc. So if you're going to use macros, you can use them there. Now that's a that's a way uh, I used to bypass the clunky action bar. Is actually just to use a lot of macros. Uh, recently though. Uh, I haven't really felt like remaking any macros after I reinstalled my game and I forgot to back up this sort of configuration information and stuff like that. So I haven't really felt like doing it and the action bar has just been a lot easier to just to drag and drop some, well not really drag and drop, but slap some abilities on it and call it a day. Um, but if you are really struggling with that action bar like I used to, like it just made you want to scream, uh, just make macros in place of them. Now something, macros in general though, uh, more useful if you if you it's a function you're going to use a lot that you don't want to have to type in over and over again. I know a lot of people you they want to change their chat mode when they log in. The chat mode is listed right here. Mine is in say right now, and I leave it just in say pretty much all the time. However, you can't. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. You can set it to anything pretty much that you want it. Um, party, tell, shout, link shell, that sort of information. Most people probably want link shell. What this does is that you don't have to put in any commands to talk in link shell. I can just slap in a bunch of text and boom, it automatically goes in my link shell. I don't have to type in slash L or control L or any of that other stuff. Um, however, you know, a lot of people want it to be have their default chat mode to be link shell or shout or I don't know, God I hope it's not shout. So they'll make a macro called chat mode. And then they'll go in here and I don't know why I did that. Now they'll go in here and they'll type in chat mode link shell. And then that way, whenever they log in the game, all they have to do is hit control one and it automatically sets their, their default chat to link shell. Um, personally, I just, I don't really care that much. I I'll hit slash L. I'm just so used to that from FF11. It makes no difference to me. I never changed my chat mode in there either. It was fine. Now this is of course if you went in here you changed a bunch of keyboard settings changed a bunch of other settings and now stuff's weird you don't know why it's doing what it's doing and you want it to stop sure restore and stop default settings i'm not going to do that because i don't want to go spend the 20 minutes it takes me to go through that keyboard and get it the way i like it so uh that's pretty much all of these there is a little bit more and i'm sorry i know i've been talking everybody's ear off here um but all of these widgets on your screen here can be moved and adjusted. 
What you want to make sure first is that this is unlocked like this. Um, if you click that, it will lock it. And now none of this stuff can be moved. It's all stuck here. So you may have it locked if you're having trouble trying to get it, trying to move this stuff. Um, it should default to unlocked when you log in, though. Uh, it does that now, I believe. So when you when you make your character the first time, so it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. Now, so let's say you want to deal with this chat window. Click on it here, and it highlights it. Now you can now you're going to get these options to like make it taller or make it wider or just make it bigger this way this is the maximum it'll let you do it but why you would want this much of your screen taken up I don't I don't know to me though I like it kinda long and just a little tall there and that's how I like it now of course clicking this just changes your default chat mode to whatever you want it to be whether you're in a party and you want to make sure whatever you type goes into your party Changing this too frequently, I find, will just make you mistell. And if you're a jerk like I am, you're just going to end up telling the wrong person that he's a poop face at the wrong time. And then you're going to look like a tool. So, I don't know. I just leave it on say and then type in slash P or slash L for stuff I need. The only, the only thing I really like is the ability to hit, you know, control R for, for a reply. Uh, control T will set it to tell mode automatically, but that's pretty worthless. Um... Control R, on the other hand, is great because this game has long, really long character names. You know, you got your first name and your sure name, and they both can have many characters. So you always have that one guy. I don't know if I'm one of those guys or not. It has that retardedly long name that makes no sense, and you don't know how to spell it because it's crazy. You know, and you wish that guy's name was Bob Johnson or something. And you're like, why can't your name just be Bob Johnson? But Control R helps there. As long as he tells, gives you a tell back at some point, you can just hit Control R and it'll it'll be able to reply. Um, that's pretty pretty standard stuff there. Now, if you want to if you want to move any of this other stuff, while that while this mode is unlocked, it will give you this little this little hand here. When you see it go from a pointer to a hand, you can then move things, and you see it grab it, and you know you can move things around. You can pretty much move things wherever you want. You can make them bigger. You can make um, and sometimes, like I said, you know, you gotta, you gotta find this, the spot on the item where it actually will let you, let you resize things. Um, but yeah, you can make this really huge. You can make it really small. I see a lot of people, this is pretty much default almost. The, uh, target bar is not default. This is down here. Um, and this stuff has all been moved over to the right a little bit to accommodate my chat window. But a lot of this stuff is all in the default position. You're going to pretty much see it when you log into the game. Um, a lot of people like this, you know, for instance, to be way up here. They like, you know, their their job level to be up here. And the, maybe they want to chat this target bar like right in the middle of the screen. I've seen that a few times. That would drive me crazy having this bar right through everybody all the time. But I did make it longer. A lot of people do that too. And uh, it makes more sense because... It makes the bar uh, more descriptive. Um, it makes it easier to see kind of what percentage you know the mob might be at, um, and that sort of thing. For me though, I'm pretty. I'm, I like having all this stuff kind of like right down here in the same place. And then uh, when the parties are made, it's all right here, just a big party block right there, um, with all the character names and stuff like that. That'll do for now until the new prettier UI comes out. Um, but yeah, I mean, all this stuff is movable. This is movable. This is movable. I mean, that widget above this is movable. It's all movable, and most of it is resizable. So if you're looking at my screen and go, how can you play like that? Well, that's the way I like it. If you like it a different way, you're free to change it any way you like. Um, until we get add-ons, though, we're not going to be able to do big, big, important changes. Like uh, what I'd really like, you know, is a nice parser on my screen somewhere. Um, showing party damage and my damage and stuff like that. Even though it was just my damage, I would be happy. I just want to be able to experiment with stuff and calculate my damages, you know. And I would get any add-on that got rid of this action bar. I would do whatever it took to get rid of this action to get rid of this action bar. To have to hit a button to activate the bar first, it it makes me want to blow my brains out. Because um, what if I want to? I mean, sure. If if it's in this bar, if I want to do protect. That's not so bad. I just hit one. Doesn't matter whether the bar is activated. But what if the ability is in a different section? What if it's down here? 
that I want to use. Well, first thing I got to do is hit a button, but I don't want to use this, so now I have to escape out of it, and then I have to hit the down anchor to go down to this so that I can use it. That just that takes too much time. Just stay on all the time. I don't know why this actually. Sorry, I'm I'm ranting again. I apologize, but. Hopefully I've answered a lot of questions. The only other things I want to go over real quick are these text commands, which I think should be in the configuration, but they are not. It's possible that they just haven't gotten around to it yet, and they will be in there shortly. If that happens, I will put something again in the description. Um, the display command, really useful. Most of the time, I'm not wearing an adorable little hat, and it drives me crazy, and I want it gone. You can type display head off, and it'll just make it look like you're not wearing a helm no matter where you are. Very, very useful when you have ugly, ugly helms, like Lancer helms, all really ugly, especially on Makote. Besides, this character's gorgeous. Why would I want to hide her face? You wouldn't. If you want to turn it back on, display head back on. And now, you can also do that with your main hand, which I have turned off right now. If you want that, you hit MH for main hand. And if you want your off hand, I mean, off hand, sorry. If you want to turn your main hand back on, you would just hit MH on. And as you can see, they've got that conjure staff. Turn that back off. This is really nice if you're taking screenshots or making a video and you don't want some clunky weapon blocking your character. So there you go. Uh, those are just the last few things I wanted to go over and make sure you knew about. Um, but hopefully that was helpful to someone. And uh, I'll see you in my next tutorial, guys.